Hello, and thank you for joining today's presentation in the Richardson RFPD webinar series, A Walk Around the Block. My name is Katie, and I will be your Global Spec Moderator. Now let me introduce today's presentation. Richardson RFPD is an aero electronics company. It is a specialty electronic component distributor focused on the RF and wireless communications, industrial IoT, power conversion and renewable energy markets. With its global reach and extensive technical capability, Richardson RFPD serves its customers through component development and selection, technical support, and world-class logistics and supply chain capabilities. Richardson RFPD had a few simple objectives for its Walk Around the Block webinar series. To organize concise webinars of no more than 20 minutes around an engaging topic, make it applicable to the global engineering community seeking solutions for design challenges, and to feed this community's hunger for information on innovative technologies to help differentiate their own products. In today's session, Ehab Tarmoun, subject matter expert, staff applications engineer in the discrete and power management group at Microchip, will address the design consideration for developing a high power density and high efficiency power converter using silicon carbide technology. So without any further delay, let me turn it over to Ehab. Go right ahead. Hi, and welcome to this presentation on Microchip's 30 kilowatt Vienna PFC reference design. My name is Ehab Tarmum, and I am an applications engineer in the discrete and power management group. This is the outline for today's presentation. We'll start with the Vienna rectifier. We'll talk about the theory of operation and some of the commonly used apologies. Then we'll go in some detail on Microchip's 30 kilowatt Vienna PFC reference design. We'll give a short overview. We'll talk about Microchip's TSS, Total System Solution, as it pertains to this design, cover some of the test results, and also the Plex model that we have available that models this entire system. We'll also cover our silicon carbide product portfolio and end with a few key takeaways. Okay, so here I'll talk about the Vienna rectifier and the different topologies. So the Vienna rectifier is an active PFC that converts the three-phase AC into a DC output voltage. And in order to achieve the high efficiency, it uses a three-level boost converter. Also, because it's an active PFC, the power factor needs to be as close to one as possible, and the harmonics that it produces also need to be below the limits that are specified in IEC 61000 Part 3-2 or Part 3-12, depending on the current rating of the device. So the circuit in the top right corner represents one phase of a VNR rectifier. And it's essentially a boost converter that will produce an, a positive output voltage with respect to the neutral midpoint when the input voltage is positive during the first half wave. And when the input voltage is negative, it will produce a negative voltage on the negative rail with respect to the midpoint. And so this essentially is a boost circuit that consists of an inductor, a switch, a high frequency freewheeling diode, and a, an output capacitor. And so when the input is positive, the current will flow through the switch in this direction. And when it's negative, it will flow in the other direction. So the AC switch needs to be able to conduct current in either direction. And also during the center uh, second interval of the switching cycle, it needs to be able to block voltage so that the current will flow through the freewheeling diodes into the output. And so in order to realize this AC switch, there's three topologies that are commonly used. The very first one on the left is the uh, the classical version of the Vienna rectifier. And we have it noted here as topology one. And it consists of a full wave bridge rectifier using silicon diodes and a single MOSFET. The second topology removes one pair of diodes and splits the MOSFET into two, two smaller ones. And so during the positive half wave, the current will flow through the diode and into the MOSFET, um, and this FET will be switching at the switching frequency of the converter, and it will have both conduction losses and switching losses. And then during the negative half wave, the current instead will flow through the uh, mo this MOSFET and diode. And so the, the power is split between the two MOSFETs, so you can use smaller MOSFET than what's in topology one, and also you can eliminate two diodes, so you will have a higher power density a converter. Then for topology 3, which is what we use for our reference design, 
we limit the uh, diodes and just use two MOSFETs back to back. And so these MOSFETs are silicon carbide MOSFETs, so we can run them at a high frequency and have low switching losses and have low RDS on. And so the way this works is when the input voltage is positive, the MOSFET on the left is switching at the switching frequency and the one on the right is just constantly on. So it'll only have conduction losses, no switching losses. And then when the input voltage is negative, it'll flip the other direction so that the MOSFET on the left is just constant on and it'll have conduction losses and the one on the right will have the switching losses and conduction losses. Uh, this is the highest uh, power density of the three topologies. There's some challenges in the, in the control of it compared to the first two, uh, but overall it'll give you the highest power density and lowest losses. So here you can see all three phases of each of the three topologies. And right away you can tell that on topology three on the right has the fewest components. It's the overall smallest circuit and it'll give you the highest power density. Um, but one of the challenges with this topology is the, the control aspect. The first two topologies are able to, uh, they're not sensitive to mismatches between the AC zero cross and the zero cross of the sense circuit that goes to the controller. So with topology three, we have um, advanced control techniques in place to help deal with that. Um, the other item here is the three level modulation. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, and we can look at that a little more detail here on topology three, although it applies to all three topologies. And so with topology three, you can see that this uh, switch node connects to neutral through the AC switch. And so when this switch is on, the switch node is equal to neutral, which is also the midpoint of the output. And when the switch is off, and the AC input voltage is positive, then that means the freewheeling diode will be conducting, and that means the voltage at this node will equal the positive rail. And if the input is negative and the switch is off, then the negative um, freewheeling diode will be conducting, tying this switch node to the negative rail. So this node can be at one or three different voltages, essentially. It'll either be at the positive rail, the midpoint, or the negative rail. So this is what's meant by the three level modulation. This is our 30 kilowatt Vienna PFC reference design. This was developed in collaboration with North Carolina State University through the Power America initiative. The primary application for this is an EV DC fast charger, where this is the front end that converts the three phase AC into a DC voltage that feeds the next stage, which is the DC DC stage that charges the battery pack. This can also be used for other applications, but that's the primary uh, application for this design. And so this has a, an efficiency of 98.6%. The three-phase input can be 380 or 400 volts, 50 or 60 hertz, uh, and it outputs 700 volts DC. To work with 480 volts, you only need to adjust uh, some of the sensing circuitry and the output capacitors, and then this design will work with uh, for a 480 volt system. Uh, but it'll output 800 volts in that case. Uh, this uses our silicon carbide technology. This is our se second generation silicon carbide MOSFETs and shocky barrier diodes. Um, on the picture here, you can see the three phases of the design and on the heat sink are the MOSFETs. And these are our 700 volt, 15 milliohm MOSFETs. And on the bottom side, sandwiched between the heat sink and the circuit board, are the shocky barrier diodes that are 1200 volt, 50 amps. And that's, that's done so that you can have a small loop area resulting, resulting in lower overshoot, lower inductance, and lower switching losses. The MOSFETs switch at 140 kilohertz. The uh, controls are all done dig digitally through our DSPIC digital signal controller. So all the advanced controls uh, are handled there. And we're able to achieve a total harmonic distortion of less than 5% at half load and less than 3% at full load. The PCB was designed according to IEC standards in terms of safety, uh, creepage and clearance, EMI, and other considerations. There is a, an IEEE paper available uh, that reviews this design in detail and has uh, you know, details on the, on the design considerations and test results here. So if you're interested, you can. Uh, look up this reference here. 
And there's also an uh, video from APEC of last a video from APEC of last year where um, we uh, showed the uh, you know, some details on this design. And this is the link for that. So all the reference design files are available on our website. If you visit microchip.com slash PFC, you can download all the files. Uh, we don't provide the hardware itself as, uh, you know, as the PFC, but we do provide all the files so you can see the, the Osseum files, the build materials, the, all the schematics and everything, as well as the software and user's guide. Um, and then you can you know, get sent it out to get built if you need to and uh, to, to evaluate it. We also have a Plex model available, so you can initially uh, use Plex and review the design. You can do some simulations, look at the the uh, power levels and switching losses and temperatures of the different devices. And it includes all the controls as well. So that's available uh, also at microchip.com slash PFC. You can download the, the Plex model. This is a high level block diagram of the reference design. And so if you uh, just follow the flow from left to right, on the left is the uh, three phase AC input. And the first block that it goes into is the EMI filter. So this has the uh, common mode and differential mode filters, uh, as well as access points to measure the AC voltage and the input current. The next stage is the power stage. So this is the Vienna topology. Um, and then the output of that is the 700 volt DC. The output voltage is measured with this DC sense block and feeds back into the controller. Uh, there's also a pre-charge control and pre-charge circuit that charge up the output capacitance uh, and uh, close the relay afterwards before you turn on the actual PFC. The controller we use is uh, we have our PIM board. This is a plug-in module using our DSPIC 33CH dual core digital signal controller. And so this handles all the controls for, of the Vienna rectifier. The, everything is handled in the secondary core. The main core is just doing diagnostics and uh, higher level uh, communications with the system. But in terms of the digital control, it's all handled in the slave core. And there's also a block here for the bias supplies uh, for, for generating the, uh, the different rails for the low voltage and uh, circuitry and all the gate drive circuitry as well. Before I get into the actual test results, I just want to talk about Microchip's total system solution. Uh, we have a broad portfolio of technologies that are used across many different industries. And with that, we're able to offer a total system solution, or TSS. And so I mentioned already our second generation silicon carbide MOSFETs and shocky barrier diodes, as well as the DSPIC33CH dual core digital signal controller. Uh, we, but we also have other devices that can be used in your designs. So we, in this one, we have the uh, rail to rail op amps that are used in the voltage and current sense conditioning circuit circuits, as well as an LDO 3.3 volt regulator and a CAN transceiver. Um, for our silicon carbide die devices and power modules, uh, we have a brochure available at microchip.com slash sick. And there you can, you can also find other uh, models, like SPICE models and PLEX models uh, of these devices. And for other system solutions, you can visit microchip.com slash tree link tool. Um, so with that, let's go to the next slide, which is the um, starting with the test results. So this shows some measurements taken on the bench. Um, of the Vienna rectifier. And so first, I uh, just want to show you the three-level modulation. And, and so if you look at the picture on the left, it shows you have some voltage probes that are measuring um, from one phase to the other, and then another voltage probe that measures from one phase to back here, which is the neutral midpoint. And so we talked about three-level modulation and said that it can either be at neutral or at the positive DC rail or the negative DC rail. So in this case, we expect to see either zero volts, 350 volts, or negative 350 volts, uh, depending on the, uh, the phase of the input. And, and so if you look at the, the scope trace on the right, you can see the uh, purple trace is the uh, measurement from the, the switch node to the midpoint. And you can see that it toggles for about 10 milliseconds, it just 
switching back and forth between zero volts and 350 volts. And it does that for 10 milliseconds or half a line cycle. And then it goes from zero to negative 350. And so when we talk about three level modulation, those are the three levels that you see. And also measuring it from phase to phase, you'll see this, these five levels here. So you can see on the blue trace, one, two, three, four, five levels. And that's a phase to phase measurement here. This here is our uh, measurements using a power meter using the Yokogawa three phase power meter. And so here we ran it at 27 kilowatts and found a, an efficiency of 98.38%, a power factor of 0.999, and a total harmonic distortion of under 3% at 2.758%. The uh, MOSFET reached a case temperature of 78 degrees, and you can see that here in the uh, thermal image here on the right. Um, with the heat sink has the MOSFETs mounted to it, and, and you can see the measurement point here is at 78 degrees. And so from the power meter, you can see that the, uh, as I mentioned, the efficiency at 98.38%, power factor at 99.9%, and the total harmonic distortion under three under that 3% limit, or 2.758%. Um, and this is just on one of the three phases, but the other two phases give you uh, very similar results, uh, well under 3%. So, um, and then individually here, you can see the harmonics for each, uh, the, uh, the um, distortion for each uh, harmonic. So as I mentioned, we have a Plex model available of the Vienna PFC reference design. And this models different aspects of the reference design, including electrical and thermal and, and controls domains, as well as magnetics domain. And, and so what you can do is run the simulation and see the component uh, temperatures. So for example, we do include component models of the silicon carbide MOSFET and shocky barrier diode. And you can see the switching losses and conduction losses associated with the parts, as well as the uh, temperatures that they reach under different conditions, under steady state condition, under a uh, transient condition. And so you can do all this with Plex. Um, it also includes the uh, controls, so you can uh, see how all the controls are developed. And another option is to use processor and loop. So this, this model works with um, the controller that's built into the model, or you can use our pin board and over USB run all the controls on your processor, processor and loop, and then um, use it to develop your software, tweak your software, uh, and see the impact on the power stage. So you can do a lot of system level development um, without the hardware using this Plex model. This is an overview of our silicon carbide products. We'll start with the power discretes. We have both dye and discretes available for our silicon carbide MOSFETs and silicon carbide shocky barrier diodes. And they come in different voltage options, uh, 700 volts, 1200 volts, or 1700 volts. Next, we have the power modules for our MOSFETs and diodes, and they come in different configurations, uh, different current ratings, and different packages. We also have, it's more focused on the aerospace and defense market. It's a power control module. And this has the control, the drive, and the power stage all in the same module. Basically, it's a system in a module. And this is targeted for flight critical applications. Then lastly, we have, um, uh, we acquired last year, near the end of last year, we acquired a company called Agile Switch. And they developed a, a digital programmable gate driver solution. Um, it was developed, the technology is called uh, augmented switching. And what this does is it reduces the voltage overshoot, the ringing, and uh, EMI. And it also has, sh has a robust short circuit protection. So um, currently we have core and plug and play boards available. Um, and these are targeted really at the power modules. Uh, but we also are in the process of developing gate driver ICs. So this is a summary of our uh, silicon carbide uh, portfolio. And just to summarize some of the key takeaways, um, the reference design is a turnkey solution to help minimize the development time of EV fast chargers. The design files, the Altium schematics, the build materials, the software, the user's guide, the Plex model, all the design files are available at microchip.com slash PFC. 
And we offer a broad portfolio of silicon carbide products and solutions. So we have the die, discrete, and power modules, as well as the digital gate drivers using aug augmented switching. And finally, the microchip TSS, or the Total System Solution, is there to support the entire, entire system from LDOs, transceivers, and op amps to the MOSFETs and digital controllers. So you can uh, visit microchip.com slash treelink tool to see the devices that we offer. And thank you for your time and interest in the Vienna PFC reference design and our silicon carbide solutions. Thank you. Thank you for attending today's webinar in the Richardson RFPD, A Walk Around the Block series. Thank you again to EHOB for today's presentation, and thank you from both Microchip and Richardson RFPD for attending today's last session. Take care, and we will speak with you soon.